can clarify. Yesterday, uh, when we read the uh, passage, Levina said that the coherent narrative is one. A coherent narrative is one. There is only one coherent narrative. That that was his one. And today you were mentioning this, and you were mentioning this guy. I don't know this guy, but uh, uh, this Kieran. the mad guy. Who, oh, oh, the judge. Yeah, yeah. Who, yeah, who from the inside, uh, his narrative uh, felt coherent to him. Yeah. I, uh, and yesterday I, I didn't touch upon it because I, I thought it's not a big problem, but still maybe we can discuss that. Uh, is it really true that uh, there is only there can be only one coherent narrative? Uh, why? It can there can be only one coherent narrative if we imply that there is a uh, universal reason that there is a truth capital T, uh, and then all the other truths they are not truths strictly speaking and. In, then, yes, you, there's a very good argument for saying that there, is, there can be only one uh, coherent narrative. Yeah. But I if not, then uh, there can be as many as, as you want coherent narratives. Uh, I, 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 I don't no, think no, it's a big no, problem, but I thought I would put it on the table. Wouldn't, wouldn't we want to then go back to the distinction between the, the human sciences and the natural sciences? Yeah. So that, or even make a continuum from mathematics to poetry, so that certain discourses are are, uh, are better uh, operate better with uh, a single narrative, such as mathematics. Uh, even when there are multiple forms of math, they cohere with one another. Um, I think Wittgenstein's notion of family resemblance is probably ultimately the the, the the useful notion when we speak of coherence. And then, uh, on the other side, uh, say national literatures, I mean, us is always respectful of national literatures, we don't expect them to be the same literature, uh, and yet, from all of these different national literatures, we have insights into uh, moral sensitivity, uh, insights into justice. Um, it, it, insofar as uh, justice is messianic, and we don't know how to get from here to there, yeah. we would have to try. Uh, there are, there's no reason why we couldn't try a variety of different ways. No one has in their pocket the definite way. Um, so, so the word narrative is is, is good here. Uh, but but mathematics, uh, unless I mean in a certain way, uh, Thomas Kuhn or, or Bachelard have shown that you can account for the same phenomena with a very different discourse. Uh, it's a matter of, then of elegance and simplicity. So that you could use Newtonian language to talk about Einsteinian uh, physics, but it's cumbersome. Um, and, and yet, if you insisted on a different narrative, you could manage it. Uh, so, so in a certain sense, it's a matter of uh, elegance and convenience. Uh, but, but I think we tend to think that both here and working on the side of, on the side of mathematics versus poetry. Is, is more amenable to to that single reason um, because of the, the mathematical skeleton, as it were. Uh, but over in the uh, other side, without losing the, the unifying uh, aim uh, of justice, which we do know in its general contours, for instance, we could say now justice would not involve uh, the creation of suffering. Right? It would not multiply suffering. Uh, we, we, we could say it would not involve murder. There would be no murder in, in the realm of justice. Uh, there would be uh, um, no theft, because remember, for Levy Mouse, property is not simply a function of the capitalist system. It's, uh, it's part of what it means to be a human being, is that you have your space, your, your environment. Uh, we, we expect that we can buy and sell it at some point, but it's, it's part of being human. Um, so there, there is... Uh, without absolutizing it in the idealist sense, uh, a unifying goal, but insofar as we don't know how to get there, and we don't know which way is the best way to get there. But the beauty of, of I think, distinguishing policy from, from principle is that these are real debates. Uh, you know, we often, you know, it's so, so attached to our own position in a, in a policy, think that the other side is ludicrous, ludicrously wrong, but as we, you know, we didn't have to learn it from Plato and Socrates. The most important things are those things that we we debate. 
right? That we cannot say, oh, two plus three plus four, we're done, right? Uh, uh, so, so I, I don't know if uh, ultimately there are multiple. I wouldn't go with multiple reads, no. But I would go with uh, multiple attempts, multiple uh, uh, experiments, openness to uh, multiple possibilities. So that once we get, for instance, in the political sphere, we throw out the Marxian false uh, characterization of uh, history as a science, and then we see again what, that utopia is not uh, uh, um, uh, some kind of false gesture. Uh, our, our, we, we have a variety of utopia, and there were a variety of utopian attempts. I mean, there were a variety of utopians, and that's where the variety came from. I don't know if you're familiar with it. You probably have Buber's book, The Pathways in Utopia. Yeah. It's a beautiful book, actually. You know, he has an idea of the kibbutz that didn't really come to fruition, but it's a, that's what utopia is about. You try something out. Robert Owen and, and, and um, um, Fourier. And, uh, uh, we, we give, so, that, so we could say that, uh, oh, we're going to try democracy in this way in our country. We're going to try democracy in this way in country. Uh, for instance, right now, the American experiment with uh, uh, deliberative democracy, uh, uh, Congress uh, is not is, is really not working. It, 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 the structure itself is it, is falling apart. Uh, it's turning into a parliamentary system. That is, the parliamentary the, the democracy was the primary model. America came up with a different model, which was deliberative, rather than you get the majority to do whatever you want. It was we'll argue this thing, and now it's becoming just a battle of two parties. Just you know, we have the majority, we do whatever we want. If we don't, we can't. Um, so we'll find out whether it survives. But it's, but it's suffering structural problems now because these are the things we debate. These are the things we're not sure about. Um, um, I, I don't. Uh, I, one thing that disturbs me some is you, 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 you often hear um, in the political discourse that oh, uh, democracy is not suited to our country, and I find that disingenuous. That uh, democracy is not suited. To how do they, first of all, how do they know beforehand? If they haven't tried it, right? Um, how can you rule it out? And if we mean democracy in Levinas's sense, then it, it's the very nature of a political regime that, that the dignity of the citizen, so that uh, you already are a democracy. And the thing is, you are oppressing the democracy that you already are. But um, I don't know. Would you? Would you want? Um, in what sense can we, or ought we, or does it make sense to think of reason as divided against itself? I, I, I have, you know, because we, we hardly know how to speak of reason otherwise. Even if we detach the equation of being and logos, uh, and, and we recognize that we're, you know, we have a kind of map of things, it's not perfect, it never will be, um, um, and, and, and that, that, that uh, as Koshin was saying earlier, for the philosophy is uh, always wrong, I guess. Uh, 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 it doesn't that simply stimulate us to keep talking to try to get a better uh, account of it, uh, meaning that one that we can agree upon, that is more coherent, more uh, accurate, uh, true to the things, uh, and uses a language that is more clear, that is uh, more explicit, uh, more transparent, all the things that uh, Habermas talks about. Uh, I find Habermas very persuasive. Mm -hmm. uh, what? 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 Yeah, yeah, in the, in, in the public sphere. So, and we're trapped in these also in these categories of the one and the many. So we think the alternative to the one is the many, um, but actually the one is a product of the many. Uh, the, uh, from a Levinas point of view, it's because of the, the discussions, the debates, the arguments that, that we ended up with. Uh, what's, what, what, to what extent that we even have a shared discourse is a product of everyone having their, their two cents, their, their, their say. Um, the, the, uh, the, the Occupy movement was uh, famous for allowing everyone to have their say. And it meant that, that they would have meetings for 12, 13, 14 hours. I mean, who could even put up with it? But they put up with it. They put up with it. Um, and, uh, and, uh, um, because they, they, they felt that that was, that, was, that was what it was about. That's what, that's what a, a true political um, a community should be about, that everyone has their say. Uh, now, it certainly wouldn't work in a very large country. Maybe in a small country it would work. Um, so I, I, I think having come to Lithuania a lot and having gone to Israel a lot, that probably the political model would be different in a small country versus a large country. That a small country could have uh, much more input uh, at, at a very human level. 
than is possible. Maybe it's a mistake to have large budgets, but, uh, but we have them. I, I kind of imagine sometimes what it would like to be is to be Chinese. I mean, how would I feel being one of one and a half billion people? I, I, I don't have any idea what that would be like. And yet already, as an American, I'm one of 350 million people. This is a big difference. Right? <laughs> um, uh, so the federal system was an attempt to mediate that, that you would have lower levels of government, higher levels of government, uh, so you would feel attached to something that was you know, local, politics is local, etc. But uh, I don't think we've come uh, to a solution of how to deal with large countries. I, I don't think we know how to deal with large That is, as citizens, how to, uh, India, you know, <laughs> what, my God, you know. Uh, but anyway, so I, 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 I think the notion of the oneness of reason makes sense so long as we don't have a false idea of reason. That is, parts of reason are going to require experiments, variety, choices, and uh, we'll sift out which are better, which are worse, which succeed, which fail, which allow us to be human, which don't. I have a question about, like you said, like, the democracy is about, like, everyone has their say, has yep. their say. But the problem with that, like, you know, Nancy Fraser, and, you know, they have the, the latest of that person who plays, it's about the redistribution. So do you think democracy is about everyone has their say, has their right to say, or has their dwelling? Everyone can have a dwelling. For me, that's much more important than say. I don't need to say anything if I have my dwelling. I have an answer. <laughs> I believe there are material conditions for saying. I don't think you can have a say, properly a say, unless you have food, clothing, shelter, uh, a good job, uh, a good education, uh, beauty in your life. Uh, I think this is uh, this is why Habermas is right about the ideal communicated situation. It's far more than this abstract negative freedom of speech. You know, everyone has the right to speech. Even so, the poor person, the starving person, has as much big right to speech as the billionaire. No, this is not freedom of speech. Right. So. So I think, yes, I, I, I absolutely believe in uh, freedom of speech being one of the core values of a democracy, but I include the conditions for the freedom of speech. You there know, is no freedom of speech. The best way to practice democracy is you've got to have majority <coughs> of middle class, mm. a mature majority of middle class, yeah, so you can practice democracy. Otherwise, if you in, in, in Karmax period of time, there's a huge gap between the poor and the rich, and it's impossible to have democracy. This is and this takes time to have mature middle yes. class. It takes a little bit time. This is why the greatest danger for those democracies uh, that the world has, uh, America being one of them, is the uh, is this plutocracy. Montesquieu already pointed this out. The plutocracy is the greatest danger in a successful democracy. Because once the, the rich take over, it's very hard to come back, and they destroy the middle class. That is the elimination of it. this whole economic crisis in, uh, in America, and perhaps in Europe also, was the destruction of the middle class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't, didn't hurt anyone else. Yeah. It was uh, taking away mortgages and homes from the middle class. Yeah, yeah. Right? And right now, by the way, in the so-called aftermath, although I think we're still in that economic crisis, the rich are now buying up the property. Yeah. It is now selling for one quarter of the price of what it was. Right? So it's a it was a land grab by the by the rich. Uh, so the question is, at what point is it too late? At what point is it over? When I look at American elections and see people spending a billion dollars, right? Something is wrong. Something is, and then campaigning for, for four years. Uh, I think in Britain they have a rule that you can't campaign for more than what, 30 days? Mm -hmm. I think this is such a brilliant rule. That should be the rule. No, absolutely no campaigning until 30 days before the event. Besides, no one has a memory more than 30 days anyway. <laughs> so, um, but we don't have that. And, and uh, in this last election, it was very hard, inspiring because it, it turned out you could not buy an election. It turned out. But uh, that, was the, that was the test. It was uh, very close. To me. <laughs> it was very close. That's right. That's right. They both had to buy it. The one was just buying it. Right? <laughs> well, I was, remember, I posed it in terms of a businessman versus a politician, so I, I slanted the whole thing. You know? But, uh, yeah, so that's how I would answer that. I, I would provide a social democratic answer. There, there is no, and unfortunately, the ideology of liberal democracy is, is coming to that, uh, this neoliberalism. Uh, but I think, again, it's a seepage of capitalism, where I am a consumer as a free agent, into political discourse, where I am a citizen, which involves much, much more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's about the, my duty over my right. But that's what yeah. I think we need to view the political system based on that. Not like I'm afraid. Like, 
agent on the market. Mm -hmm. So that's how I think WebNAS is very critical in that sense, and it's very useful. Yeah, useful, I, I think it's useful as, as uh, again, as I said before, it's fundamental political theory because he's not filling in all the details. Yeah. Right? It's not like John Locke, yeah, yeah. it's not like Hobbes, it's that. not like Montesquieu. Like, you know, like, ma men have political something. It's kind yeah. of... Like his ethics, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's not telling you what to do. Yeah. 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 Just, just to, to give that Victor's question, I think <clears throat> what uh, was said by, by Gianni Latimo and then and Gadamer probably, that in, in yeah in democratic society, in general society you, you have different uh, coherent coherently true um, how to say stories or narratives. But but probably it is not to say that all of them they are uh, equally or, or equal, yeah? Because probably there are some hierarchy. I mean and we, we I mean of course there is no one answer how to find it and then what is the, the, the best of, of, of these different uh, narratives? But uh, I think uh, they, they are saying that it's, it's not equal. I mean, of course, they are somehow um, coherently true. They are true. They are coherent. But, uh, but it, it doesn't mean that in, 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 in democracy we accept all of them in the same level. This is, this is the... And I would second that. One of the dangers to me, as I see it intellectually, uh, in terms of, at least in America as I know it, this neoliberalism, which falls back upon this lowbrow philosopher, Ayn Rand, is that it is too coherent. It's, it's simple-mindedly coherent. So people become ideological rather than debating. It's a, it's a confrontation of, a, of an unbreachable ideology, unbreachable because it's coherent and simple. Um, uh, and so it, in a way it mimics bad Marxism, because the Marxists have all the answers to all the questions, and now these neoliberals have all the answers to all the questions. If I, let me pick up on that, because uh, when we say, I don't, I don't argue with what you both said, but I think we have to consider the implications of what we're saying. So when we say that there is a hierarchy of narratives, I'm perfectly fine with that, is then you have to say on which grounds we're going to judge, on which grounds we're going to make the judgment. And uh, I think that the answer will be on the, well, funnily as it sounds, on the better coherence of the narrative. We're going to approach one, uh, the, the proposal, uh, let, let me yeah, we'll try to, to, to justify what I'm saying. Is, uh, we'll approach uh, competing narratives. We're going to try most probably uh, the premises of both. And we'll see, well, the one or another explains more or accounts for more of the reality of the environment which surrounds us. And uh, in that sense, it is a better narrative, so we're going to go for this one. It, it explains more. And in that sense, we will follow the ideal or the utopia of one reason, still. Um, well, here's my problem with that. Yeah, uh, what I already said. <laughs> that is, if it's simply coherence, now you're adding comprehensiveness. The problem with ideology. No, oh, I thought you were adding that the, the no, the, just the, coherence. Yeah. Coherence in the sense. Uh, I thought it was like well, more true to how things. It includes more of more comprehensive picture. Of, uh, more, more comprehensive. You say it accounts for more. Yeah. Okay. It's, no, it's, uh, it right. expands the horizon. There's another metaphor. Right. I'm not trying to jump on. Yeah. yeah. So the problem with, uh, I think the character of an ideology versus say a policy debate is that. It only sees things through its lenses. So what you might want to introduce is more. They will already have a picture of what human nature is. Human nature is self-interested. Uh, and everything else is left out. So um, I would have said, uh, instead of turning to this comprehensiveness, which is a kind of literary approach, I would have gone to Levinas's notion of justice. Uh, which is more or less approximate to what we're aiming toward as a just society, that is where I can be moral without harming other people. Um, um, so I don't have to fall back on you know, the character of you know, human nature or, or, uh, or 
Okay, so let me take back even now what I just said. Mm -hmm. There's no breaking through ideology. I don't know what to do with that politically. I don't know what to do with that. Well, right? You, you, when you have a closed-minded, coherent system, <coughs> they think it's comprehensive. The Marxists were like that. And, and now the neoliberals are like that. I yeah, but that, that, that's, like uh, I think what we forgot, and because I, I, I agree with everything yeah, you say, I think we're just uh, maybe proposing different solutions to that. So I'm still defending the old school stuff, and uh, just yeah. for the sake of it, probably. Yeah. And uh, you are more on the Leninist side. But I think we should remember, you know, the, the democracy uh, came, of course, it's an old uh, ancient Greek idea, but uh, it came back to us in in 18th century, yeah. and that century is called for um, uh, for a reason, a uh, century of enlightenment. Yeah. Democracy works only with enlightened individuals, mm -hmm. enlightened, and they believe in reason, of course, yeah. in one reason. Uh, it's a, an ever-expanding uh, uh, account for reality, and uh, uh, one reason is an ideal, of course, but some say well, we can reach it, some say no, but it's, it's not the point. And so, uh, uh, of course, if we want anyone from 18th century, I think we have said that, if we want democracy to work, it works only in one uh, case, when uh, the people who rule, so that's the point of democracy, they can make informed choices. Um, so, and I completely know it's, uh, it's very easy to criticize after 200 of, uh, years of attempts. No, I love what you're saying. I, I believe yeah. in what you're saying. Yes. You believe? Because I'm, I'm quite skeptical because it's, it's, it's a naive thing, you know, uh, when we look at the ever-expanding uh, requirements for citizens, of education. I mean, two, in 200 years, uh, we can't even imagine the majority, 90 percent, 98 percent of French Population didn't know how to read in the end of 18th century. Now uh, you know every other citizen has a PhD. You know, it's, 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 that's what it is. It's this inflation of education is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the optimist, the optimist in me would say, yeah, and, and we achieved so many things. But the pessimist in me says, well. Did we really? I mean, uh, uh, all those PhDs and all the all the technicals. So maybe the problem is with what we teach. I don't know. Maybe it's not the right uh, education which we're giving to the people. Maybe that's the case. But you know, all those PhDs uh, they don't really strike me as informed citizens. At the end of the day, they, they just uh, what they get uh, intellectual tools to entrench themselves in their, you know, uh, narratives and to defend uh, those pretty narrow narratives because all the ideologies and if Levin is what I'm afraid of, if he becomes a political philosopher, well, the, the biggest obvious risk is that it becomes an ideology and you put it on the table and then, you know, and, and then we just play those intellectual charades with, with each other, Marxists against Levinasians or neoconservatives. It's going to be this stupid uh, political debate before any election. So I, I, I'm, I don't have an answer, I'm just putting yeah, no, 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 on the no, table no, no, because no, no, for no, me it's interesting. No, I think Havel shows that it is possible to bring Levinas to the political table without ideology. Right? I, I, think, I, think there's, I think there's no escaping ideology. That's I think that you cannot, you cannot, everything you say turns out to be ideology. I think yeah. this, is the, this is the thesis Ricoeur is defending. Um, you have to be, I think the, the best thing you can do is to be aware of the fact that everything tends to become ideology. And to being aware of that means allowing yourself to see things from, from, from other perspectives. Because any, I mean, um, what, does, what does being an ideology mean? It means we cannot see things from an from an, um, an all encompassing, all encompassing perspective. When we see things, we see things from a perspective. And we cannot, uh, there's, there's no escaping that. Exactly. But I think it's, it's, the, the, it's the same. It's, it's the political discourse of the same. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So the only protection is, is, is the difference to me between an ideology and serious political discourse is open, exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's to be open it's to, to, be to other, other, no, other ideologies, ideologies yeah. if you want. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, you know, Bergson's two sources of morality and religion, you have the open source and the closed source, right. but in a way they're necessary to each other in that, um, you know, like, in a way, we've, this is an institution, the Levinas Seminar. Yeah. You know, we've got together, you know, 
we're, we're throwing around words like saying and sad and what, you know. <laughs> and, and then there's a loving us industry beyond this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, it takes place in the States at Duquesne University Press and, you know, Cambridge, you know. Like, you know uh, and, yeah, of course, I, I agree with you. You know, you, you, you're going to have this kind of, uh, I, I once was at a meeting at the Palmer House, which is the nicest hotel in Chicago. For liberation theology. Uh, Gustavo Gutierrez talked about the poor and we had a nice uh, spread of food afterwards. It was, uh, it was the weirdest thing I've ever participated in. <laughs> but, but what you do have with the institutions, this is the danger of the hard <coughs> what the institution does is at least preserve the possibility that the saying can happen again. And, and I think, you know, what Levinas does this better than, say, um, um, Marx does, in that uh, Marx wants a kind of scientific socialism that will solve all problems, whereas Levinas says, no, no, this should be interrupted. Mm -hmm. well, um, yeah. The same thing happened, you know, if you read, um, I was talking to, to Richard about this last night, uh, Alfred North Whitehead, a you know, great metaphysician. Um, books called Process and Reality, and Whitehead makes it very clear that he's not trying to create a metaphysical system that is final. And yet, uh, this is why Whiteheadianism sort of died. There's Whiteheadian scholasticism where everyone sits around. I, I go to these meetings, and we talk about, <laughs> we talk about the actual entity and <laughs> if these things really existed. You know, so, yeah, yeah. And to, actually, to put Paul's idea into everyday life, actually, you watch, if you want to look at newspapers, try to compare each newspaper. That's the way to avoid to be uh, totalized in one ideology. Yeah, yeah. Everyday life, you don't just see one event in one newspaper. Compare the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> no, you need an ideology to know what is going on in the world. See BBC, CNN, you have different kind of channels, you got to compare them. Because the way they report is completely different. Although they try to be neutral. But at the end, there's a mess behind the medias, and but the only way to quote something to unsay is compare the same. That's, I think. Yeah, but I, I think it's say, 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 sorry, Paul. I'm just. You know, I, I'm, I never knew that I'm so old school. But what you say, <laughs> it's, uh, it's this philosophical idea of keep the distance and be critical. It's, uh, it's yes. you don't need Levinas for that. No, it's it's, 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 more, than it's, it's more, more than that. that. It's more than that. that. Yeah. Because but it is that certainly. Yeah. It is, it it is, is that, that too, certainly. of course. But okay. it's more than that because, and I'm going to bring now Habermas once more because it was mentioned. Uh, yeah. uh, and I'm going to bring his concept of uh, deliberative action. It's more than that because because democracy does not mean only to be able to make uh, choices um, and to be informed about the choices you make, so to be able to make informed choices. Yeah. Democracy is, in Habermas' opinion, in my opinion as well, uh, much more than that. It's the, the opportunity to discuss, to see if a thing is good or bad, the, the opportunity to examine together a thing, not to uh, democracy is not just voting. We, we are not voting and then we are establishing if the majority has chosen something, we are, we are saying this is good. No, democracy means let's discuss this stuff, let's discuss about it, and, we're, and at the end of the discussion, we all have to make the same choice. We all have to agree this is the right choice. It's and I think this is, why, this is why I think that the American democracy was, was, was the best democracy in the world as long as it was conceived as this kind of uh, deliberative yeah. democracy. Yeah. But when it, everything started to go around uh, majorities, I, everything I, fell apart. I, I disagree because I don't think democracy can start even when the people in the democracy, the subject, they don't realize they need to be disinterested, disinterested to their own interests when they discuss. Because in ideology and idealism, Levinas talk about the ideology yeah. so clearly. He was saying how to get rid of the ideology is not to say, to go scientific, to go like we talk together, we have a constant, constant whatever. Our we, we we know like we are fake, but we are duped or whatever. Yeah. It's about disinterestedness. You need to leave your own interest away. Then you can get rid of ideology because you don't you don't get everything for you in in democracy in discussion. America. Yeah, this discussion is, produces this. Yeah, this no, is no, not to hear another point. Yeah, yeah you're saying, but point you, you don't care about your own, own interest. No, then you're exactly. not hearing. No, it. then no, you're not no, hearing. No, 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 no,
the problem is yeah. the, 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 the problem is the discussion. The, the, there is no long table discussion. There's always power yeah. relation discussion. Yeah. Okay. That's what happened in the United States. Yeah, so but so discussion is kind of necessary evil now. I we don't have better way, saying, but this but problem at the minute. I, I totally agree with, with what you're saying, and this is what Habermas is saying. This is why this is why discussion is so so important. Discussion does not mean um, this is this is what's what this is what I want, and I'm going to try to convince you everybody that this is good for everybody because this is what I want. This is not discussion. This is and this is. This is ideology. This is a way to convince masses that, that something is good for them in order to in order to, that you're going to serve your privileges if you want. But a, 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 a true discussion, I mean, a discussion has to be true, has to be an honest discussion. It's a discussion that's that's um, where everybody everybody argues for for the sake of truth and not for for his own sake. What, 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 it's what, like, yeah, but this is what Mao is saying. The yeah, but what, yeah, that's, that's, that's what she's she saying. She's, 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 saying, she's, saying, from a she's right. saying people only come in selfishly. Yeah, exactly, and in that's discussion. why Habermas is, uh, uh, I always consider him naive. I, I mean, it's all wonderful what he's saying. It's just that when he says, when he writes all those rules for for good ideal discourse, you have to be honest before you start. You have to uh, consider better arguments. You yeah, know, all, the, all those things. But it's an ideal. He admits it's an ideal. Yeah, 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 it's, 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 it's just uh, naive yeah, in the sense that... Uh, it should be naive. It's an ideal. Well, how can yeah. ask, you, ask you to, to be But to uh, be I mean, how does it help us in the political scene? I mean, uh, let's remember, <coughs> I watched the presidential uh, debate in the States, the candidates, when they were talking about the presidential debate. You're being cynical now. No, come on, come on. No, I've seen them. I've seen them. You've seen them. Yeah, I've seen them. It's not a, first of all. So we, we call them debates, but they're not debates. Not debates. They're, they're exactly. two guys up there. No, but that's, that's the thing. And I was watching it, and I, thought, I remember when I was at school, the, some American teachers here, they brought this game. The, the, it's called the debate. It's a game where they teach you the technique, you know, the debate club. And the, I remember I, I went in, and I thought... Uh, I lost, of course, that game because, and uh, after I thought I had better arguments, and they told me, no, 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 you didn't reiterate on the second session your stronger points, and that's why you lost. So <laughs> the, the technique, or the, the debate now, is about basically Winning. the technical Winning, yeah. situation, yeah, yeah. and how you, you do not knowing when yeah, to repeat it, and so he said that you should have. Remember that and shout to that at that exactly precise point. It's Protagoras. Yeah, and I, I said, I'm, I'm out of here. Right. This is completely right. stupid. Right. 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 This is I said it yeah. once, if you can't hear me, then it's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching those candidates, and I remember that game well, because I thought, these guys, they just know how to play the game wonderfully. That game, which that's is right. called the debate. So but, uh, but that's the real debate which is happening, I'm sorry to say, but that's the real debate the which is happening. What, what Habermas is talking about, mm. I, I participate maybe in three or four discussions in my life, which you reminded uh, a little bit. And that normally happens with alcohol and when people relax and they forget that they have to fight, they open up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, that's how it is. Yeah, it's true. Well, it's it's a, a, we shouldn't be no, 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 Fine, concern for yourself, concern for me, selfishness, versus the political stratum. How do we get to a society where people are concerned for the common good? Now, it is true that uh, the, the, the ideal communicative situation that Habermas describes is, is naive, and I, I believe that ethics always involves a naivete. It's a healthy thing. It's part of what we're calling patience. Um, it's not completely true that the debate was the formal structure of, uh, of a debate of winning points. It seems that way. I, I know it, 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 my, my analytic uh, colleagues, that's all philosophy is for them, the debate winning the points, as opposed to finding out how things are. Um, but in the, uh, in the event, each side is attempting to show that the other one is only this false image. And each side is trying to burst through with sincerity. So that sincerity itself becomes 
ideologized. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. because everything converts to the set. But it's this constant struggle to break through. Both of the candidates were trying to present themselves as if sincere. Now, again, it's up to the Democratic public watching the debate. Uh, uh, I, I am amazed. I, I personally support Obama. Uh, I am amazed that people, many people I, I know, because of the, the synagogue, who hated Obama and they considered him a liar and false and, uh, and like a fake and. And, and the hard part was to convey that, no, 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 you may disagree with him, but he's not fake. But they thought, no, no, he's just working in the interests of so-and-so and so-and-so and so and so and actually, that was how I felt about Romney. <laughs> it was all, so they were mimicking, they were mirroring exactly my opinion. And this is what Richard Kearney was talking about. When you actually talk to people, you find out they, they really think the same thing you do. It's just that you disagree about where it applies. Uh, and so then I felt the problem was, how do you break through? How do you show the same? Where, where, I mean, I thought in the end, Romney sincerely believed that the business model was the appropriate model for exactly. American politics. That was his sincere position. I think he was terribly mistaken, <laughs> but, he, but it, it wasn't like he was bought and sold. He believed it. Uh, and, but I also think that Obama sincerely believed, and, and I think he presented himself as someone who in some way did listen to the other side and disagreed and tried to work Democrats and Republicans together, and that didn't work, but he tried. Uh, and they thought all that was just a hoax and a lie and a trick. Um, so it's, it's an ever, it's an ever continuing struggle uh, to maintain the naivete of, uh, of I, I trust you're sincere. I, 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 I see this is your true position. But I don't know how to go from what uh, Mao was saying. When you face these people, I mean, I had to face it that they hated the candidate that I thought was good. And the truth is, I hated their candidate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, right I hated their candidate. Right yeah. So I don't know what to, how to get past well, this. I have exactly. the potential yeah. and yeah. then the yeah. 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 I have a potential really answer know. for your questions. Please answer. I think the only way to avoid it, what Victor just said, the game playing debate toward what uh, Mao and, and Paul saying we have kind of disinterested uh, debate in democracy is you got to have mature majority of middle class first. Yeah. Without that, everything is it not possible. Everyone I was talking to was mature middle class person. Well, come on, it's not reality in the world. They how many countries mature? Oh, oh, majority. No, no, no. But I'm saying this problem occurred in my discussions in a mature well, okay. bourgeois society. The idea of mature yeah. is not mature enough. No, 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 that, this is cheating. Yeah. This is how the whole third world is trying to say, well, we can be dictatorships. Yeah. No, no, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. You don't need that. You have to start somewhere, baby steps. You, so, you, you give responsibility to the people. You're going you're gonna to flounder. You're going to make mistakes. But you have to take the small baby steps before you can well, take And you definitely. can't wait till you have a middle class. No, no. It's like Marx. So, oh, well, wait till, we have, wait till we have a communist society and then we'll be good to each other. It's crazy. It takes time. I mean, this excuse what, all the time. It's a third world excuse. It takes time to, to, to have that kind of majority. It takes time before we start being ethical? No, no. It's it's now in here. You got to like act and mask. You got to improve the party now in here. But you got to have that ethical, the, the ideal, the pictures of debates in, in, in democracy in mind. But you got to have that background. The, you know, the, the counter case is India. India is well, a democratic society and they haven't waited for the middle class. Tell you what, I've been in India three times. I respect India in one way. They are truly democratic country because they don't have official language to, to reduce the diversity of ethnicity into the one. In mainland China, we speak Mandarin. There are lots of races here. In Chinese, we, even in Taiwan, we speak Mandarin. But see, one country, how many ethnic? Not how many races, how many ethnicity? If there's only one, one language, there's no, no true democratic diversity behind it. And India is the only country, the biggest democratic country, without kind of reducing culture into one language. So, so they can do it. There's but the, the, problem is, the problem of democracy is the other side of democracy is chaos. In India, a lot of people talk because we expect different, but ended up a little bit dumb. It's not efficient in okay. capitalist but society. They call chaos, they call diversity. Well, there's a problem of, well, there's always two sides of one coin. Democracy has problems. Otherwise, it's, not, it's the best form of that. Well, well I think that Nazi would prefer chaos over dictatorship. He, he speaks mm -hmm. about anarchy. He, speak, he speaks about this anarchical mm -hmm. principle. But that's not political principle. The anarchy no, it's not. It's, it's not. not necessarily. It's not the political system. 
I, I, for, I'm Chinese, I hate anarchy. I know what is that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what is the cultural revolution. You, you, you are anarchy. You it's a big country. country. I'm, I'm against authority. I can just kill you. You are my teacher. You are authority. You are bad. I <laughs> that's, that's anarchy. I hate that. Yeah. This no, Apparently, I'm getting a signal from your man. <laughs> 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 Let's continue. Well, it's a good debate. It's a very good debate. I'm glad we had this debate. And I said, I'm thinking, you're right, you're right, you're right. How do we put this together? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's difficult in spirits. You don't have to pull it together. You don't have to like consensus. Sure, I think you're wrong about waiting for the middle. No, I'm just sort of waiting. I said, <laughs> you, need, you need to to have that. That be the cause first. <laughs> and you got to improve this. You always need something first. And then you yeah. have to start. Well, that's the point. I you got to, to start. To know, I need to know Greek better before I read Levinas. I won't read Levinas. <laughs> <laughs>